In this video, we're going to describe how to use the template and visitor design patterns to generate JSON. We're going to take a look at JSON fundamentals. We're going to describe what an abstract class is, and more importantly, the business case for having an abstract class. We'll talk about the template pattern, the visitor pattern, and we'll have a look at several examples. First, let's start with JSON fundamentals. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is JSON. Some examples of JSON. JSON in Spring MVC, the easy way, and then some more custom JSON in a Java project. First of all, what is JSON? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's become popular in probably about the last five years especially because it's a lightweight way to exchange data. For example, going from browser to server or server to browser, or mobile to server, server to mobile, mobile to mobile even. It's just an easy, lightweight way to show some name value pairs and some array data types and pass this data back and forth between clients. It is rooted in JavaScript, but it can certainly be produced and consumed by just about any programming language, including Java, including C Sharp, and many other programming languages, even Perl. A few examples. If we take a look at this link, plantplaces.com slash Perl slash mobile and then flashcards by genus. We'll see the JSON stream that we're essentially emulating as part of this video course. Here's a look at that flashcard by genus JSON stream. Also hold control and press U so we can look at a more flat file definition of this. But this is a stream that I made for a plant flashcards application, which was part of a previous video course I did with PAC on create Android apps with Kotlin. So essentially the application reads this JSON stream and then shows a picture and then the user has to guess which plant the picture belongs to. So that's one case of a JSON stream. A few other JSON streams we're going to see. Here's one that I'm a little familiar with from the city of Cincinnati, which is near where I live. And this is the Cincinnati Open Data Portal. So you see, we can go out to data.cincinnatiohio.gov growing economy if we want. And we can pick one of these streams that comes up and then we can see it in JSON format. So building permits, if I click on the building permits here, give it just a moment to render, and then API. Now take a look, there's a link to an API endpoint in JSON. I open that in a new window and we'll get, some, I just picked this one at random, but here is a publicly available JSON stream with data provided by the city of Cincinnati. Okay, similarly, this is something that we see in many different places. Here's the uh, Chicago data portal. So we can go to buildings and find some very similar data here as well. As a matter of fact, Chicago was one of the first cities to have an open data initiative like this. And what's really interesting is it uses a very similar JSON stream. So a stream of data that's easy to consume, easy to parse. Once again, building permits with a very familiar look and feel looks very similar to what we saw in Cincinnati. I can click on building permits and then I'll get a JSON link as soon as that comes up as well. So many cities around the world from Cincinnati to Chicago, Seattle, many other cities are offering open data in this format. API and once again, very similar look and feel. Copy, JSON, copy, choose that and boom, there we go. So we see JSON as something that we can consume in many places. It's very easy to produce. It's also very easy to consume. You might remember in our last video, I did a little typing for Monardo Didyma, and it came up with a kind of suggestion list. This is on the plantplaces.com website, and this is very similar to what we just saw, where this is fed with the JSON stream. So autocompletes we see on the web, a lot of that updating. Probably, I don't know for sure, but probably when you're looking at Facebook, things like that, you're seeing a lot of JSON exchange back and forth. To create JSON in Spring MVC is ridiculously easy. All we have to do is put a request mapping like this, where we say produces application JSON. We need to say response body, which says, okay, I'm returning back text. I don't care for a time leaf template here. Then we make some kind of collection or some kind of object, return it. And Spring MVC automatically makes the JSON from that. Let's try this out with a similar example. Actually, just continue with the example that we used in our last video. And let's go ahead and have this generate some JSON, doing it the easy way. 
So I go to my generate JSON, which we created before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the additional attributes that we require, as we saw in that last slide. So method equals request method dot get comma and then produces equals double quote application slash json this tells it it's not going to get html in return it's going to get json okay public at response body now let's not do a string let's do a list of plant helper like so okay control let's see doesn't like let's do value equals generate json Need to add one more name since I'm using several attributes here. Control Shift O. Okay, we'll organize our imports. Now I'll simply say list plant helper plant helpers equals new array list plant helper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these plant helpers that we created in our previous video, and I'm simply going to add them to this collection of plant helpers. So plant helpers dot add and then we'll say Mahoney Aquafolium helper. Okay. Plant helpers dot add Monarda Didima helper. And then finally plant helpers dot add and we'll say Monarda Fistulosa helper. And then we'll return plant helpers. Okay. Let's restart our app and see what this looks like. The application's now running. Let's take a look at what we get. I simply paste in the generate JSON URL, hit enter. And now we see it's going to walk through the method as we have before. Create our plant helpers as we saw by using both the abstract factory and the prototype method, prototype on this last one. Then add each of our plant helpers to our collection and simply return the collection. Press F8 to tell it to continue. And let's see what we get. There we go. JSON that easy. You see what it did is it's able to take a look at each of the attributes of our collection and print them out in name value pair type. So what's interesting is we can take this and then we can go to JSON viewer. One of my favorites is JSON viewer.stack.hu and we can paste in the text and then we can go to the viewer and this gives us an easy way to go down and take a look at each of the elements created in JSON. Let me bump this up so you can see it a little bit better on the video. So take a look here. You see Mahonium Aquafolium. Now look at this. Do you see it even is smart enough to go down and pull out our composition classes, our smaller classes that are composed in the greater class and the greater plant. In other words, we have this object here, which is our Mahonium Aquafolium. We have the Evergreen Helper, which is a different class, and that has a leaf type. We have Monarda Didymo, does not have an Evergreen Helper, so that's still null. And then our Monarda Fistulosa, which we created using that prototype method. So you see, it's very easy to create JSON from Spring MVC. We could leave it at this, and that would be good. But I do want to think about how we could create custom JSON as well, using the template and the visitor pattern. So I just want to say, this is how easy it is to create JSON. We are going to go a bit more complicated just to demonstrate some design patterns, but nonetheless, that's how simple JSON is in Spring NBC. So if we do need to do some more, maybe some custom handling, what we need to do or what we can do is use this JSON object and JSON array classes, which are kind of helper classes that help us to handle JSON manually, if you will. Can't think of a better way to explain it than that. So this is something that we're going to need when we do our visitor and our template method projects. So what we need to do is we need to add this library to our project. All we do is we navigate over to our application and we'll go back to Java view and then we'll double click on our palm. And this is just a set of libraries to help us to create some custom JSON. So I need to paste that dependency you saw on the slide I already have it in my clipboard just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to paste that into our POM file. I'm going to save and I'm going to right click and choose Maven Update. Now, again, if you're doing it the easy way, the way I just demonstrated, you don't need to do this extra step of adding this JSON simple library. But for me, I know we're going to expand on this in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and add the JSON simple library now to get us all set. 